<laughs> I think a lot of us do. Jake Shapiro, the beat reporter for the Colorado Buffaloes. Uh, you're with a website. Uh, with, give, give everybody the website before we even start. Work for a company called BSN Denver. We cover BSN all the Denver. teams in town. I cover the Buffs as well as the Rockies. BSNDenver.com. It's a great place to get up on, on Buffaloes news, but all kinds of Denver sports news. And so we appreciate you stopping by today. Of course. And, and first and foremost, are you surprised that they're, they're where they are today? Yeah. I mean, nobody expected the Buffs to yeah. be where they are today. Uh, I mean, coming into this season, they had won four games. They had won 10 games in general, I think, the last three years combined. Isn't that crazy? They've already won 10 games this year. Anyone that says they expected the Colorado <laughs> Buffaloes to be the eighth-ranked eighth, eighth team in the country on December 1st was lying to you. <laughs> One team still gets to celebrate. Unfortunately, for the viewers and watchers and readers of BSN Buffs, it is not the Colorado Buffaloes as they drop this contest 38-8. to eight. How special is this? Considering it's a rookie season, you grew up in Denver. It's incredible, you know, being able to be a part of this group as a rookie, uh, being from Colorado, just loving life and so, so glad that I could be a part of this. Is this moment right here crazier than your wildest dreams? Hands down, yes. The men's golf team left the Wyoming desert invite in third. I didn't know they had a desert in Wyoming, but I'll be it. And for one final time in my college career, well, the confetti didn't really work. Buffs win here, they beat UCLA. While some programs are definitely playing out of bounds, others are having to clear hurdles that are nearly impossible to clear. But when you play a 2-3 zone, you're expecting a lot of three-point shooting from the other team, and that's one of the areas that Colorado gives to the other teams. Mile High Stadium, when you're yeah. playing against Colorado State, what's that feeling like when you can just go, this is my effing state? <laughs> you know, it's a pretty good freaking feeling. I really want to cuss right now, but I can't. <laughs> Standout freshman McKinley Wright has been terrific. Not only did he take home a Conference Player of the Week honor, he's been one of the Pac-12's best all year. I even have his jersey already. In 33 minutes per game, Wright is averaging 15 points a contest with five assists, five rebounds, a steal, and a block. It's been a long time since CU had a freshman this good, which begs the question, when was the last time CU's starting point guard was a freshman? Does it go all the way back to Chauncey Billups? We'll have that answer for you later in the show. What were your overall thoughts on this game? Well, despite C Unit's thoughts, which were Utah is bad, Utah was actually good. Playing defense in football is just as much ability as it is mindset, and these guys don't really have either. About this season, the rise was systematically disassembled in plain sight. Here he is to expand on this thought in this week's Buff Banter. The Colorado Buffaloes had one of the best defenses in the country. Their head coach was a renaissance man. Their players were once again heroic, and they had a motto to die for. Poof, just like that, CU is 5-9 and nine in their last 14 games. Those wins came against Colorado State, Texas State, Northern Colorado, and two Pac-12 schools deep in rebuilds. The Buffs' goals were obvious, as laid out by junior cornerback Isaiah Oliver in the spring. We have the same goal as last year, and that's to win a Pac-12 championship. But the team lived forever in the shadow of the year prior. Colorado didn't grow on last year or even keep its momentum. The sequel, as per usual, was cruel and unusual. It's not hard to pinpoint when the rise peaked and whatever it is that's going on at the 40th parallel started. Hours after clinching the South last year, the cracks started to show in a bar brawl between fellow buffs. Weeks later, their prized defensive mastermind Jim Levitt bolted for Eugene vis-a-vis -vis Baltimore Colts, and the cracks became fractures. Then, a domestic abuse scandal and the fallout that surrounded signaled a full breach. Oh yeah, then football again, without four NFL draft picks and a defensive staff that was entirely new. That's how we got here. Five and seven is actually the second best season in the Mike McIntyre era. It doesn't feel like it. Credit hype? internal and external expectations, but these buffs were not supposed to stop rising. They were supposed to be different. At the very least, they'd make up camp and jump to a climb again next year. With no game in December, it feels as though CU is once again headed for the valley of irrelevance rather than the peak of college football. The aftermath of this mess, mess which took place during the season began to show while the dismay was still in progress. The players who built 2016, according to Mac, looked foolish for most of 2017. Yes, they lost talent, yet it was abundantly clear that the coaches had not put them in the right positions to succeed, a trend which has plagued CU throughout McIntyre's time in Boulder. 
The man who coined the term the rise saw his overhyped position group drop chance after chance against Utah and all season. To make matters worse, Darren Cheverini's disagreements with McIntyre's methods are so obvious that it has been exposed from the team's secret vault. And Chev isn't the one who's wrong. McIntyre's track record with assistance has reached concerning levels. DJ Elliott's follow-up to Levitt was laughable even by fair anticipation. Brian Lindgren has lasted five excruciating years as the offensive coordinator, even with those above the head coach questioning why. A half decade of lackluster special teams play has been laughed off by McIntyre to the tune of, special teams is a really easy area to pick on, very easy to pick on. It always has been. Anybody in the stands can do it. On January 10th, McIntyre signed a five-year, $16.25 million contract to stay in the foothills. Largely celebrated at the time, now it's scary at best and a program setback at worst. It's hard to blame everything on coaching, though. McIntyre himself said CU had arrived a year early last year. So I ask, if last year was a year early, what did we just witness? This season was bad, but it wasn't a disaster. It's currently in plain view that what took place beginning just hours after they beat the Utes to go to the Pac-12 championship game and the negativity since could impact this football program in searing ways for years. To recap, the defense was seen Saturday night plowed over like snow on the side of I-25 as Utah headed southbound to a bowl. Their coach of the year winning headman is shrouded in rumors of departure for the second straight year. This time, many across the front range wouldn't mind seeing him go. Phil Lindsay is gone. Now what? This is not the fall of the Colorado Buffaloes. Not quite, at least yet. But there is no more rise in Boulder. It's been disassembled by the same men who commenced it. It's going to be more of the, us in a second. So, Vinay, Jake, back to Vinay. And, and, and Jake, it's still us. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. The men's basketball team, or program rather, keeps regressing as we just talked about. Head coach Tad Boyle really has not been able to stop it. But I may have an answer for you, so... Hear me out. For the first time in Tad Boyle's eight-year tenure at Colorado, it appears the Buffaloes will not make the postseason in any form. The highly successful coach, and arguably the best in school history, is in a rut. The team won't make the NCAA tournament, barring a miraculous run, for the second straight year, and three out of the past four. Looking back now, was five years ago Boyle's peak? In the midst of a three straight year tournament run, a tournament win, a Pac-12 championship, and on the verge of a top 10 ranking nationwide, everyone was ecstatic for Tad. The Buffs have yet to top that. There have been big wins, great players, and good accomplishments, don't get me wrong, but the notoriety has decreased, and so too has the excitement. Some Buffs fans think it's time for a change at coach. That's tough. Boyle has five of the nine 20-plus win seasons in school history, meaning his worst seasons would be celebrated as above average in CU history. Boyle is here to stay, and there isn't any doubt about it. The young players on his team already show a change in approach to recruiting. His former players have never doubted him. Quote, it's amazing to me how many players take Tad Boyle for granted, Bo Gamble told me this summer. Quote, what an unbelievable job he has done building up the program. We are in the golden era of CU poops, and we have not peaked yet, end quote. So what's the problem? Boyle hinted at it himself. College basketball is an unfair sport. Boyle's playing right. His opponents aren't. But enough blame. Boyle isn't making excuses, so neither will we. There are three things that need to happen for CU to pull out of this bit of a lull and head back towards the dance. Number one, the Buffs need to develop their players. Some seniors on this current squad have not made those steps, and same with the past. With 10 underclassmen, this, this is essential for the growth of this program. Number two, a more comprehensive offensive game plan. Tad ball is awesome. Defense and rebounding, we get it, it works. But I believe the Buffs should focus more on offense. They're second to last in scoring in the Pac-12. Number three, the marketing around this program needs to change. The keg used to be the biggest party in college basketball, for real. Long gone are the glory days of the C unit. Assistant coach Kim English was a huge hire for youth relatability. Boyle getting into social media helped too, but it starts with athletics. They cannot treat hoops like second fiddle to football. There needs to be a campaign to get the blood back into basketball in Boulder. 
Do all this, and then the McKinley Wright Spencer Dinwiddie comparisons will be warranted. Moreover, do all this, and Boyle will finally tackle that sweet, 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 sweet 16. With would be first round pick Derek White and a senior led squad, last year's Colorado basketball team was expected to be one of the best in school history. Ultimately, frustration characterized the season as it ended in dismay. But with eight fresh faces, Tad Boyle's Buffaloes have gotten a reset. And the team has bonded quicker than usual due to a summer hoops trip to Italy. Yeah, the Italy trip was not just thrown, you know, plucked out of thin air. I mean, it was planned. Every four years, the NCAA allows college basketball programs a trip overseas. That gives the team 10 summer practices along with a handful of games against professional teams. The basketball aspects of the trip were certainly helpful, but the aspects off the floor were the ones the guys wanted to focus on most. We're outside of our comfort zone, so it forces us to bond with each other, to walk around and just find new experiences and find new places to eat. And just, just, just go out and just have fun with the guys. Spending a week with teammates, some brand new, really helped to form better bonds. And just be us 10, and we'd be pointing at the... Uh, at the, everything, like trying to order, and no one understands us, and we don't understand them. So we really had to look out for each other. So yeah, it, it created a family atmosphere. Like, the food, the gelato, the everything, the water, the everything, the gelato, the everything. For some, it was their first time overseas and an unforgettable trip. Uh, well, I've never left the country, so my first trip was to Italy, so that was just unbelievable seeing everything. For these Colorado Buffaloes, basketball has been more than just a game. It's been an opportunity to travel the globe. Basketball has done way more for me than I ever expected. I've been all over the country because of it. I'm thankful. And now the, now the world. The Buffs did go 3-1 and one in Italy, but that's not what mattered. What mattered was how close of friends the team became along the way. It just goes to show how sports can spark lifetime friendships. Jake Shapiro, one, three, one, two, three. Uh, News Team, Boulder. The glory of being a top five team in the country can come with much respect. The University of Colorado's club hockey team has earned just that. They beat the undefeated Minot State Beavers, the number one team in the country. Built behind head coach Eric Ballard, the Buffs have a unique club president, Matt Hefter who is key in their ascension. And Matt is a, is, is a real special student. Um, he gives a, a ton of his time and effort, um, and there is no pay. Uh, it's purely volunteer base, and he, he, does, uh, he does a wonderful job. On the basketball court, or on the football field, at the University of Colorado, being a top five team in the country would bring the attention of the entire student body. But in club sports, there's less of an audience than in the NCAA. But for Captain Matt Hefter, being on the ice is just a part of being the University of Colorado's club captain as being off the ice. The difference, and this will go with any club sport, is that the club is responsible for everything off the ice, whether it's apparel, uh, team travel and meals, hotels, uh, the sleeper bus, everything you can think of. The hockey is fun, but the legacy Matt built in sustaining the hockey team is special. And his, his efforts are tireless, and uh, he's relentless in, in making this a better program, not only for himself, but for his, his fellow teammates. But more importantly, I believe that Matt is really interested in preserving something really special here at the University of Colorado. Jake Shapiro, News Team Boulder. Overall, a disappointing night for the Colorado Rockies, but a bright future ahead for them. Jake Shapiro, BSN Denver. For Buff Sports Live, I'm Jake Shapiro. Welcome into CU Sports Mag, I'm Jake Shapiro. You mean welcome into Buff Sports Live? I'm yeah. Vinay Simla. <laughs> yeah, Vinay, I was just pointing out that it's the old guard and the new guard today hosting the show. Yet I'm taller and I can grow facial hair. Sports. Uh, this week we have a show for you. My director said in my ear to call it a great show, but you can be the judge of that. 